Hi, I'm Zach London from the University of Michigan Department of Neurology, and today I'm going to teach you how to play The Plexus, a strategy card game about peripheral nervous system localization for two to three players. Okay, so it's the early 20th century, and you're a PhD candidate working in the laboratory of famed neuroanatomist Augusta Klumpke. She's put you to work doing the tedious job of dissecting cadavers and cataloging the different nerves and muscles. Little does she know, you've been working after hours to try to reconnect those various structures. Roots, trunks, cords, nerves, and muscles, hoping to reanimate a human arm from the dead. A zombie arm which you will employ to complete your PhD thesis for you. And why not? No one's going to read it anyway. So let's get started. I'll show you the setup for a two-player game. The game comes with two decks of cards, innervation cards and muscle cards. Start by shuffling the innervation cards. Deal five face down to each player and put the rest aside as the innervation draw pile. Now shuffle the muscle cards. Place three face up in the center of the table to form the shared muscle cards and then deal one face down to each player as their secret muscle card. Set the rest of the muscle cards aside as the muscle draw pile. The object of the game is to gain points by creating and completing nerve pathways called tableaus to innervate muscle cards. These pathways must contain an appropriate combination of roots, trunks, cords, and nerves. You can innervate a muscle with as few as two of these, but you'll get more points if you attach it to three or four. And if you use all four, you'll get some special powers shown on the root cards. You'll have to decide whether to save up for these high point tableaus or try to rack up points quickly by innervating muscle cards with partial pathways. Players take turns in clockwise order. In simplest terms, a turn consists of drawing an innervation card and then playing an innervation card from their hand onto the table in front of them as part of a tableau. You have three options for drawing a card. Drawing from the innervation draw pile. This is what you're going to do most of the time. Just take the top card from the pile and place it in your hand. Stealing a singleton. You can also steal what's called a singleton card from in front of another player. As the game goes on, players will be putting cards down in front of them and attaching them to each other. An unattached innervation card is called a singleton, and it is eligible to be stolen. But you can't just steal any singleton. It has to be a card that you're able to attach to one of your existing tableaus, and then you actually have to attach it as your turn. Thus, when you place a singleton on the table, you can look around at your opponent's tableaus and know if it is safe to do so. But even if it is safe, you probably don't want to leave it as a singleton for too long because eventually someone may want it and be able to steal it. Drawing a card from your own incomplete tableau. You probably won't do this often, but every now and then you may want to break apart one of your own tableaus. The most common reason for doing this is that you've attached two things together that are not directly contiguous, such as the C8 root and medial cord, in hopes of innervating a muscle quickly. But then let's say you draw the lower trunk, the card that would go between the C8 root and medial cord. Now you're thinking you might be able to get more points by having a larger tableau, but you can't just insinuate the lower trunk card between two things that are already hooked up to each other. So, you use your turn to pick up the C8 card and put the lower trunk card down. Then, on a subsequent turn, you can reattach C8. Now you've got a three card tableau, which will be worth more points when you ultimately innervate a muscle with it. So at this point, you've drawn a card into your hand and now it's time to play one. And I've sort of been alluding to this, but basically all you're going to do is take one card out of your hand, and it doesn't have to be the one you just drew, and place it down on the table in front of you, either alone, which is called a singleton, or attached to another card or group of cards, which is called a tableau. Now you have to make sure the cards can actually attach to each other. You don't have to memorize the anatomy of the plexus to figure this out. First, just make sure the colors line up. And to make things even easier, the cards actually list what they're allowed to hook up to. A lower trunk can attach to a C8 root or a T1 root on the left, and on the right it could attach to any of these cords or nerves. Be sure to line up the colored lines with each other, rather than lining the cards up themselves in the vertical plane. 
Note that you can't have more than one type of card, root, trunk, cord, or nerve, in a tableau. For instance, you can't have both the C5 and C6 roots attached to an upper trunk. You can build tableaus in any order, like you don't have to put the root card down first, and you can skip the middle parts if you want. For example, having a full tableau of root, trunk, cord, and nerve is great, you'll get a lot of points, but you could just go root nerve or trunk cord and still have the minimum of two cards necessary to innervate a muscle. If for any reason, usually because of special cards like anomalous innervation, you end up with fewer than five cards in your hand at this point, draw up to your hand limit of five from the innervation draw pile. Besides drawing and playing a card, there are three additional actions that a player can take at any point during their turn, and all three of these are optional. Connect two incomplete tableaus to each other, innervate a muscle card, or activate a root power. Connecting two incomplete tableaus together. Let's say you have a C5 root singleton and another tableau that has the lateral cord and the musculocutaneous nerve. You've been hoping to draw the upper trunk that will hook them all together and make a complete four card tableau, but your opponent just played an upper trunk onto her tableau and you know she's planning to steal your C5 root card on her next turn. Don't worry, you can protect yourself by attaching your C5 to your lateral cord. You're committing to making it a three card tableau, but at least your C5 card will be safe. Innervating a muscle card. This is how you actually get points, so you're gonna wanna do this as often as you can. Once a tableau has at least two connected innervation cards that supply either a shared muscle or a secret muscle in your hand, you can declare that you are innervating your muscle. Pick up the shared muscle card from the table or reveal the secret muscle card from your hand and set it off to the side. Then show the other players the tableau that innervates it. Again, this can be as few as two cards or as many as four. Once everyone agrees you're not cheating, pick up the innervation cards and stack them on top of the muscle card like this, so the name of the muscle card is still showing. If your innervation tableau has two or three cards, place them face down on top of the muscle card. If your innervation card has all four types of cards, root, trunk, cord, and nerve, place them face up, like this, with the root card on top. This lets you know that the power shown on that root card is now eligible to be played, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now replace the muscle card that you used, either by drawing a new card and placing it on the table or into your hand. Activate a root power. Let's talk about root powers. If you've innervated a muscle with a complete four card tableau and your cards are face up with the root card showing, you're now eligible to activate that root power. Some of them say ongoing. That means the power is in play for the rest of the game. Others say play. Those cards have one time powers that you can use at any time, even on another player's turn. When you use that power, perform the listed action and then flip the whole stack of cards over on top of the muscle card to indicate that the power is no longer available. Again, place the cards so that the name of the muscle and the point values are still visible. Players continue taking turns in a clockwise order until the innervation draw pile is empty. But the game doesn't end yet. In fact, players can continue taking turns until they run out of things that they can do, they just can't draw any new innervation cards. But they can still steal singletons, draw cards out of their own tableaus into their hands, play cards, innervate muscles, or activate root powers. And this is your last chance to try to scrounge up a few extra points, so you should really try to make as much use of these last few moves as you can. And if you innervate a muscle, you should still replace it with a card from the muscle draw pile. But eventually you're going to run out of moves that you can do or that you want to do. And when that happens, you should take your hand of cards and put it face down in front of you to indicate that you are done. Once every player has done that, the game is over and you count up points. Scoring is pretty easy. Players get points for every muscle card they successfully innervated. The points earned are listed in the top right corner of the muscle card. If you innervated that muscle with three or four cards, you'll get the higher point value. And if you innervated it with just two muscle cards, you'll get the lower point value. Wild Chord cards count towards this total, but Anomalous Innervation cards do not. The player with the most total points wins. 
If there's a tie, the player with the most innervated muscle cards wins. And if there's still a tie, the player with the most innervated pronator teres muscle cards wins, because that's my favorite muscle. And that is it. I hope you have fun playing the Plexus. Please leave us a review, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to check out our other neurology-themed games like The Legion, Sharko's Tournament. See you next time.